Hi, I'm Don. Church, making your day. And this is my beautiful wife, Natasha. Well, Christ and is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Well, uh, today Eastern Christianity celebrates uh, the day of resurrection Jesus Christ. And I want to tell you just a little bit and the differences on the calendar. So not too long time ago, on April 4th, so we celebrated um, resurrection, the day of resurrection of Jesus Christ by Western, um, West, with Western Christians. And the difference of the calendar uh, came in about year uh, 1600 uh, after Christ. Um, that was the Gregorian, that Gregorian calendar that we're following right now that was introduced by Pope Gregory. And the, the reason for that, because um, for many years, and be more precise, 45 years before Christ, uh, Julian Caesar introduced his calendar, Julian calendar. So basically, the resurrection of Christ happened at the time of the Julian calendar. And um, Eastern uh, Orthodox Church decided to stick with that calendar, and until this day, they celebrate all the holidays and anything what happened by a Julian calendar. And uh, the reason why uh, Gregorian calendar was introduced because was slight difference in the year. So the, the difference in the year between Julian and Gregorian calendar about only 10 minutes. However, in accumulation of years from the time the Julian calendar was introduced to the time that uh, Pope Gregory decided to introduce new calendar. There was accumulation and 13 days, and we still have the 13 days in accumulation right now. So that's the difference that we have. Actually, it wasn't that direct. So that accumulation of 13 days starts started from year um, 1900 until year 2099. So anything prior was accumulation a little by little, 10 minutes per year. And that's where we're standing right now. So literally it's constantly growing and change between Julian and calendar will continue for it. Uh, but today we're celebrating the um, um, resurrection of Jesus Christ with Eastern um, Christian. And um, the name of celebration is Pascha. Uh, because for two centuries, um, the resurrection of Jesus Christ celebrated on the day of Passover until year 325 when um, Roman Emperor said that it's enough of uh, confrontation between Christians. And he decided to stop that confrontation when he got 300 bishops and deacons in his um, kind of meeting get together and said that he wants to stop confrontation between Christian and he ordered basically because at that time it was, was Constantine. Yes, yes, Emperor Constantine. Because it was an order of Emperor Constantine to celebrate um, to celebrate resurrection of Jesus Christ on on the day of Easter. So Easter, as we know, is a goddess of fertility and it was actually a pagan holiday. Well the reason probably why he said that because he had no choice. The confrontation between Christians were so big that people were losing eyes and limbs and <laughs> it was so bad. But he wants to stop that and mainly turn around and focus on uh, gospel him itself versus to uh, details, you know, or disagreements or let's celebrate this day, let's Actions. celebrate Let's celebrate another day. And unfortunately, um, now as we kind of not worry about that as much, we look at this name of the Easter as a goddess of fertility. We're looking at the bunnies as their sign of um, fertility. We look at the yeah. eggs as a sign of fertility, which has nothing to do with Christ himself. However, it's kind of stuck with us for hundreds and hundreds of years, maybe someday somebody will change that, but we know by Bible that Christ is our Passover. And well, we just, um, I would say, honoring um, Eastern Christianity that they do celebrate and they say it's a Pascha, as it was originally stated, versus Easter as a goddess of fertility that has nothing to do 
with uh, the name Resurrection. Now, the emperor ordered to celebrate on the day of the Easter, but he didn't say it's going to be Easter as Easter as a day. Right. And why is actually named by Easter and nobody knows really, and why we never change that to Resurrection of Christ or Pascha or Passover as it should be. Um, probably mainly because the contradiction between Jews and Christian, and um, so that's and I, I think goes. I think one of the other reasons was was the church was kind of suffering with membership. So if they celebrated a pagan holiday, Easter. From Esther, the Phoenician goddess of fertility, um, they get more members. It's like having the uh, all of the um, illegals flood into the country, so they'll vote a certain way, right? Oh, God. It's the same thing. It's always the same thing. Uh, it's about votes and money. Oh, it's interesting comparison. It's it's sad, but it's true. Sad but true. Yeah. So. Um, so that's a little bit history, but the point is today is to celebrate the resurrection of Jesus Christ and have something that he asked us to do in his remembrance. And we're going to back again to the first Corinthians and follow instruction of Jesus starting from Corinthians, first Corinthians 24. You know what, I, too, um, if you want to know proof, if you want proof, of Jesus Christ being um, our Passover, I think it's five, six, and seven, right? Yeah, uh, seven. Let me read real quick, Corinthians five, seven. Purge out therefore the old leaven, the old puffed up, the old traditions of men, the way men do it instead of the way God does it in his word, that ye may be a new lump as ye are unleavened. For even Christ, our Passover, our Easter bunny, no, it doesn't say that. Easter eggs, no. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. As the lamb was sacrificed with Moses, blood on the doorstep, so, he didn't, so that death angel would pass over that first day. Jesus Christ is now our Passover. You have the Holy Spirit of God, you have Jesus Christ. The devil must pass over you. You've got all power over you and all your enemies. Okay. Um, 1 Corinthians 11, 24. Are we ready to read? Definitely. Okay. And when he had given thanks, he broke it, the bread, and said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. Remember he hung on the cross, his body was broken, yet now not a bone was broken. Because well, that was part of it. In our in our case awesome. we have um the old plate here with unleavened bread bread simply like the little crackers here. <laughs> and if you remember Jesus was passing this bread and everybody um, broke the piece uh, with symbolic um, of broken body of Christ and we're going to eat this bread and his remembrance now. After the same manner, also he took the cup. When he had supped, saying, This cup. This is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye as often as ye drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as ye eat this bread and drink this cup, ye do show the Lord's death till he comes. So we do it every Passover, once a year. Shall we? And we actually have I have red wine and don't have uh, grape juice. So you know, if you don't Delicious. drink, if you don't use alcohol, you can also use uh, grape juice. Yeah. It's basically symbolic.
do this in remembrance of me. For as often as ye eat this bread and drink this cup, ye do show the Lord's death till he come. Wherefore, whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily shall be guilty of the body and the blood of the Lord. And you know, that scares a lot of people. But what they what they would do after a while, they would come for once a year Passover, and the wealthier people would eat and drink and get drunk, and the poor people didn't have anything, right? That's kind of taking it unworthily, isn't it? I don't think anybody should really be getting hammered at Passover, and I don't think the poor people should have nothing. I think everybody should blend together as a community on that day for what really matters. The blood and the body of our Savior Jesus Christ who broke it willingly. He didn't have to go to the cross. You know. He could have had lots of angels come down and wipe out everybody there real easy. He's done it before in the Old Testament a lot to the enemies of our Lord of Israel. So don't, you know, repent. You don't want to go before God dirty, right? What have you done? You've done something stupid. You've done some sin. Repent. There is no unpardonable sin until no one on earth yet has committed the unpardonable sin. The only people that can uh, um, commit the unpardonable sin are the elect. God's chosen for a reason. They're chosen to stand before Satan when he comes as Antichrist in the future. Near, near future. And if they refuse to do that, if they refuse to allow Christ to speak through them, through the Holy Spirit, that's the blasphemy. Okay. And you have to, you have to Can't remember, be forgiven. You have to remember that uh, it's it's not going to be forgotten what you've done. Uh, God will know, you will know, but most importantly, that you will forgive yourself, because as you're forgiving yourself, God will forgive you as well. Because again, talking about energy, you're lowering your energy down by remember that sin that you committed. And not forgiving yourself. And remember, God can do many things, but you have to be will to clear yourself out by repenting, and most importantly, not doing it again, right? So it's not like you repent and you keep going. Remember Jesus said, right? Uh, if you forgive him, go and don't do that again. Right. That's the most important part. So that then your energy will lighten up then you will be raised up and hopefully high and higher to the level that we can sustain and be uh, together with God. So thank you so much today. It was a short um, short um, podcast today, but so short, short and sweet but, to the point. But so important. And um, again, I want to say to all the Christians and the whole world that Christ is risen. And hopefully everybody right now in one way saying, Please reason. Thank you. 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 Thank you.